Hello, hello, welcome on board for another project. This is a 5 amps power supply, or in a better term, a DC to DC buck converter. This is the top side and this is the bottom side. You can adjust the output voltage by turning this potentiometer. I designed the schematic and PCB using Altium Designer and shared the project with my friends using Altium 365. So if you have Altium on your computer, I can also invite you to my space and share the PCB with you using Altium 365. This is the bare PCB board. I sent the Gerbers to PCB way and this is the results. The quality is pretty good. Let me explain the board briefly. This is the controller chip. This footprint okay this is the controller chip diode inductor input and output capacitors and this is the terminal for the input and output connection this one uh, belongs to this table so it shows that pin one is ground and etc from here okay and as, as i said you can adjust the output voltage by turning this potentiometer in this video, I will just explain the board briefly, briefly and also talk about the schematic and PCB. In the next video, I will perform some tests. I mean the output voltage regulation and step response. Uh, there are some PCB design tricks in designing buck converters, especially this high frequency buck converters. So just don't miss the schematic and PCB section. Stay tuned. All right, before I go to the schematic and PCB, there are some points in the data sheet of the controller chip, which I should mention here. So this is the part number of the controller chip, TPS 5450, as it says five amps. The first good feature of this chip is this wide input voltage range. It says from 5.5 to 36, and the minimum output voltage is 1.2. That's why I have selected this chip to build an adjustable power supply. Another good point is this high frequency, high, uh, high uh, 500 kilohertz switching frequency. So it is a high frequency buck converter. 500 kilohertz, kilohertz it's very good. You can see the applications. And the important point is this chart. This, this efficiency chart says for this experiment, when the input voltage is 12 and the output voltage is 5, we can get up to maybe 92% of efficiency when the output current, current is 1 amp. However, in your case, or maybe in different experiments, when the difference between the input and output voltage is high. I mean higher than this because here the difference is only 7 volts. When the difference is higher or the output current is lower than 1 amp, you, may, you might get efficiency chart like this. Okay, for example, maybe when your input, when your input voltage is 25 and output voltage is 5. Definitely your efficiency chart would not would, uh, would not be this black one. It could be something like this red one or whatever. I have not calculated that myself. And another point is that the temperature is 25. So this shows you have to cool down the controller chip in whatever chip is, in whatever application. As much as you cool down the temperature, the controller, it's better. And especially when you, you want to get higher output currents or when the difference between the input and output voltage is high. So always remember that and consider this in your designs. Anyway, let's go to the schematic and PCB. All right, here is the Altium Designer environment. This is the homepage, schematic, PCB, and projects my other projects. If you don't have the Altium on your computer, I have put a link in my YouTube video description. 
just follow the link and fill out a form. It allows you to download the latest version of the Altium and activate it with a free legal license. That legal license uh, give, gives you an access to the Altium 365 space. So here is my space. You can see you will have access to all of these features. In a separate video, I will talk about Altium 365, but the minimum benefit of Altium 365 is that you can share the project with your colleagues and friends and they can comment and edit the project. So it's a cloud space that connect your colleagues together. Anyway, let's go to the schematic. This is the schematic diagram of the project and this is the controller chip and this is the PCB layout. As you know, I always talk about the schematic in more details in the article, so just follow the article link in the YouTube video description. But I want to show you something interesting. So please look at this uh, controller chip, TPS5450. Let me show you the Octopart website, TPS5450, press enter. And this one is my desired chip. One thing interesting here is, except for this inventory status, I mean the prices in a variety of distributors, just come here. I think, in the, do you remember the first page of the data sheet? I couldn't find any uh, information about the maximum output voltage. However, look at here. Max, this is the max input and Look at here, max output voltage, 31. I couldn't find this in the first page of the datasheet. So I can say this octopart is my, maybe is even better than the datasheet. You know, it gives you all information in blink of eye. Okay, like this, okay, like this. <laughs> and of course the minimum is 1.2. That's why I talk about that, but 31, I couldn't find in the first page. Do you remember? So bookmark this website. It's really interesting. And all of the services of this website is free. Anyway, let's come back to the project. When you try to design a PCB like this for such circuits, for example, this high frequency buck converter, you have to follow some PCB design rules. I try to cover them as much as possible. The first one is proper grounding. Let me show you what I mean. Let me enable the single layer mode. And this is the bottom layer. Do you see that? As you see, the bottom layer is almost a solid ground plane. This helps to reduce the length of the ground pass and prevent ground loop. The minimum benefit is output stability and lower output noise. Let me go to the top and enable and disable this again. As it is clear, with at least with one wire, I have connected the ground pin of the critical components to that solid ground plane. So it means a shortest distance to the ground plane. And that's a method that you can follow in your circuits. When the component is high current or high current passes through a component, the wire, the diameter and the hole of the wire should be increased. So I put these three wires or vias for this diode. So some, sometimes it's called wire and sometimes via. I say wire, which of them you like. And especially, and again, especially below the controller chip like this. Uh, I have put four vias below this chip. You see there? Let me check one of them with you. Diameter is one millimeter and hole size is half millimeter. And I have put four of them. So I covered the grounding and the next one the is the input capacitors. It is also called bypass capacitors. You should start with a small one. The small capacitor should be as close as possible to the chip and then increase the, uh, the, capa uh, the capacitor values. 
in this case i have two capacitors let me show you in 3d it's easier to demonstrate i have two input capacitors so this one is one microfarad this one is the first one close to the chip and then this 100 100 microfarad if you decided to uh, use another capacitor for example 220 microfarad you should place it here got it i think it's clear the next one is this diode this diode is also critical should be placed as as close as possible to the controller chip the next one is this inductor close as close as possible to the diode the output capacitors i followed the same rule as the input capacitor however it's not that much critical as the input capacitor but what's the problem just follow the same rule start with a small one and then increase it let me come back to 2d another point it's not critical as the previous ones but it's good to follow is that you put the input and output terminal on the edge on one edge of the pcb as i have put here so the input and output are as close as possible to the to each other because the grounds are common and if one ground is here and one ground is here it might generate a ground loop so why not if there is if it is possible put them on uh, put them next to each other on one edge of the pcb board this also helps to reduce the length of the ground pass why as i said because the grounds are common uh i think i covered the most uh, important rules in the next video i will make some tests uh, the output regulation the output noise and step response test using a dc load don't forget to follow and watch that video as well see you in the next video take care